The regular session of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas will now come to order. The time is 6.59 p.m. Item number two is the invocation, and it will be followed by the pledge. And by his presence, I assume it's uh, Junior Jones, Brother Jones, is going to give our invocation, followed by the pledge. Shall we have a moment of prayer? Gracious Lord, we thank thee for the beauty of another day. We thank thee for enabling us to come together on this evening and to put our minds together to discuss the business of our county and of our city. We pray for our mayor, for city council, and for the police department, for the judges, and for all that make up this cabinet. We pray that we, our minds will work together because you have told us in your word that all things work together for good for those that love thee and call according to the purpose. We pray, Master, when we leave here, we find we, will, we, we serve, serve as you have told us to serve because we have the assurance that united we stand and divided we fall. Bless our <coughs> homes, bless the children and our school, bless the police department in harm's way. We pray that you will continue to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So face the flag, hand over heart. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Number three is the roll call. Thank you. Miss Israel. Here. Mr. Sides. Here. Mr. Best. Present. Ms. Prasivka. Here. Mr. Gagas. Here. Item number four is the consent agenda. Item number A is approval of the minutes of the workshop of April 16th, 2015. Item number B, approval of the minutes of the regular session of uh, April 16th, 2015. Item C is approval of the final plat for Cinco Jefes subdivision. And your recommendation is to approve? Yes. Mayor. Mr. Gagas. I move to approve the consent agenda A, B, and C. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda items A, B, and C. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Uh, consent agenda is adopted. Item number five is ordinances and resolutions. Uh, item A is the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1142, amending the 2025 master plan for the city of Pleasanton. <laughs> Mayor. <coughs> item number... Excuse me? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, please let the record show Mr. Garza is with us. Ordinance number 15-1142 is an ordinance of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, amending the 2025 master plan for the City of Pleasanton, providing this ordinance be cumulative, providing for severability, governmental immunity, injunctions, and publication, and become effective upon second uh, publication. Mayor. Mr. Geigos. I move to approve the adoption of ordinance number 15-1142, amending the 2025 master plan for the city of Pleasant. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 15-1142, amending the 2025 master plan for the city of Pleasant. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Item number B is reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1143, amending ordinance number 12-1065 for levying taxes for the use and support of municipal government and providing for the interest and in sinking fund and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number 15-1143 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas, amending ordinance number 12-1065 for levying taxes for the use of support of the municipal government and providing for the interest and in sinking fund for the year 2012-2013. And... Uh, apportioning each levy for its specific purpose, providing for the collection of uh, deposits of taxes, establishing a discount for early payment, establishing a homestead exemption, and those 65 years of age and older, and declaring an emergency. Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move to approve ordinance number 15-1143, amending ordinance 12-1065 for levying taxes for the use and the support of the municipal government and providing for interest and in sinking fund and declaring an emergency. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 15-1143, amending ordinance number 12-1065 for levering taxes for the use of support of the municipal government and providing for interest in sinking funds and declaring an emergency. Any discussion? No one will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Ordinance is adopted. 
Item number C is reading and adoption of ordinance number 15-1144, amending ordinance number 14-1119 for levying taxes for the use and support of municipal government and providing an interest in sinking fund and declaring an emergency. Ordinance number 15-1144 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas, amending ordinance number 14-1119 for municipal government and providing, I'm sorry, levying taxes for the use and support of municipal government and providing for the interest in sinking fund for the year 2014-2015 and supporting each levy for its specific purpose, <coughs> providing for the collection and deposit of taxes, establishing a discount for early, pay early payment, and establishing a homestead exemption for those 65 years of age and older and declared an emergency. Mayor, yes. I move to approve ordinance number 15-1144, amending ordinance 14-1119, for levying taxes for the use and the support of the municipal government and providing for the interest and sinking funds and declaring an emergency. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 15-1144, amending ordinance number 14-1119 for levying taxes for the use and support of municipal government and providing for the interest in sinking fund and declaring an emergency. Any discussion? None will proceed to the voters. In favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. <laughs> ordinance is adopted. Item number six is citizens' comments. If you're a citizen of or taxpayer to the city, you can speak at this time. Please keep your comments to three minutes. Know that council and staff may not comment. All right. Item number seven, departmental reports. Public Works Director's report will be followed by Mr. Rainey's report from Community Development Services, and we'll move to that point with the managers and mayor's message. Good evening, Council Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. The production for the month of April was 41,434,000 gallons with a daily, daily average of 1.4 million gallons. Our utility department crews uh, repaired several sewer services that had shifted and settled throughout uh, throughout the town and resumed, and then they resumed the services on one ship road. We were busy repairing pump controls damaged by recent uh, thunderstorms, and they also repaired both booster pumps at the Woodland Water Well. Uh, this week we had our annual water tank inspection. The contractor televised and inspected inside all the ground storage uh, water tanks and elevated water tanks. <clears throat> From their findings, uh, they recommended a light blast and a new paint on all the ground storage tanks. This is a budget item in our next proposed budget. Tomorrow, we will be replacing a damaged fire hydrant at Sandra Circle on Oak Hill. Okay. <coughs> this will involve a disruption of service of water uh, for this area for about two hours. Uh, our main, our water main project, the board contractor completed the water line board <clears throat> on Highway 97 and Corgi Road. Their subcontractor completed a directional waterline bore which went underneath the Atascosa River from the Pecan Orchard over to McGuffin Road. They will now begin to lay approximately 250 feet of 12-inch pipe and tie into the completed bore at the uh, railroad crossing near First Street and Uvalde. Uh, we have also made contact with HD Supply uh, and have scheduled delivery of the materials uh, in categories so that we can better accept and inventory the materials uh, as they are delivered. Since this is a large order, this will assist us in the uh, in our checks and balance process. Delivery of these materials start next week, as early as next week. Uh, Landmark, the water tower contractor, has had no activity since the completion of the water tank column. As local well the general contractor, he would finish that they finished up ahead of schedule, and the next crew is scheduled to arrive on on May 21st. Uh, the Atascosa River Cleaning Project, John Mading met with the contractor this week and completed a final walkthrough of the project. He advised the, contra he advised the contractor has completed the project as per plans. The Parks Department crews continue to maintain the grounds for City Hall, Civic Center, and the Police Department. Uh, they mowed the grounds at Williamsburg Park, uh, the Longhorn Museum, the <coughs> Fire Station, and the EMS Building. They have also started spraying for mosquitoes and also treating the standing waters in areas uh, throughout town. Um, Three department crews continue to mow uh, the drainage and, and all entryways. Uh, the airport, due to lightning and high winds from recent thunderstorms, several light bulbs and, wind so uh, and light bulbs for the windsocks were replaced along the, and along the runway. The grounds were mowed and herbicide was sprayed on all vegetation along the taxiway and around the terminal and hangars. We also met with TexDOT Aviation and addressed pre uh, previous uh, inspection issues and discussed uh, some ways on handling pending items such as crack sealing the runway. And uh, the fuel tank is scheduled to be water blasted and painted next week. 
I complete my report. Any questions for Mr. Weizar? Mayor. Central. Um, Mr. Weizar, I'm wondering if the only thing that's holding us up on uh, Kilgore? Yes. Um, is weather? The weather. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as we got some, some dry weather, it rained like a couple of days after that. So we had a couple of weeks that just weren't cooperating with us and then so we are ready with materials and everything? Uh, materials, yes. And and everyone that we need? As soon as, soon as we can get some good, a okay. good week, we'll get back on that. Okie dokie. Thank you. Other questions? Um, Ms. Pacifica. Mr. Mayor. Um, d is there anything that, uh, and maybe I shouldn't ask this now, but is there anything being done about the, the vines that are growing on the oak trees in, uh, on uh, Oak Valley? On uh, Oak Valley? By the, the, the drainage area? Um, right, right there off of, uh, by, the, by the drainage on the complex, by the complex? Yeah, by the complex, yes. There's uh, all those vines. No, but we can address that yes. okay. as far as the, what's going on the fence line and along the drainage. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Cheeto has found a, uh, a way to do that. We just okay. cut it off at the, at the bottom and bottom they'll of die the, off. Okay, because I, pick them off. I noticed it's starting to grow across the wires and... It's, uh, we we can address that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Weezer. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. My report is going to be brief. I'm going to numbers. Uh, first, I'd like to say that May is actually Building Safety Week. Uh, we would like to do some things next year, hopefully, to promote building safety. As my department sometimes is a thankless job, but we're advocates for the community to make sure buildings are being built safe. Uh, citizens are getting what they're paying for. They're getting a safe product by contractors, uh, whether locally or uh, contractors coming from uh, the surrounding areas. With that being said, uh, as of October 1st, with the new fiscal year, we had 606 permits secured, miscellaneous, all the way from fence, buildings, uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, storages, all, all compiled, so totals of 606 uh, total permits, which is pretty decent amount uh, for being halfway through the year. Uh, we have had uh, six major projects uh, permitted and secured uh, within the last month. Uh, one, two, three, four, six CFOs, uh, mainly in that new area where the Route 21, AT&T, and uh, uh, the, the wing stop, uh, the Bell's department store went a major renovation, uh, added a lot of square footage. If y'all haven't been in there, I recommend y'all go in there. There's a lot more options now. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the same person wearing the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, residential dwellings, uh, housing plants have been steady and uh, we haven't seen an increase in housing permits, uh, new residential housing permits. Uh, projects under construction, we have 16 current projects uh, uh, from coming out of the ground to uh, uh, roughing in the walls to finishing up. So we're, we're very active. With that being said, I think me and David are averaging 105 permits, um, excuse me, 105 inspections per month between the both of us with handing our other duties. Uh, on the co compliance side, uh, Jesse Flores has been pretty active with uh, chasing all this grass that is growing with all this nice rain that we're receiving. Is it a bad thing or a good thing? <laughs> I'd rather be chasing uh, live grass than dead grass. <laughs> so uh, Jesse has been uh, very active. Uh, also on the compliance side, Jesse has had since uh, September of last year, they, Jesse has had a total of Seven people comply with dilapidated houses on their own, tearing them down, uh, getting these houses removed. Uh, so this is people recognizing that, yes, this house got in the way from them. They're recognizing that, hey, let me help the city and clean the city up. Uh, also, the other project we're working on, we've been working on a CASA project uh, behind the old library. That project has been, uh, to me, rewarding. Uh, I started with the project, been stressed out, a little bit extra load on my hands. But the overall, I, I'm doing it with a smile. I do want to thank David Haley over there. He's shy in the corner. Without him, I wouldn't be able to do the project scheduling. He has picked up the ball and helped me get to this project where it's at today. I can't thank him enough. David, I want to let you know that. I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, Public Works has helped. 
<laughs> up on this project. Uh, it, it's, it's been so uh, neat to see people come together on this project and a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, it took in time away from my family, but the overall, I think my family's proud of me, so I'm proud of the project. It's slow pace, but it's, it's doing good. Uh, city manager has talked with Joni uh, Garcia as of today, and so we can get her in there. They can start getting uh, contractor bids for the flooring. Uh, that's kind of all we've done in a nutshell in the last month or so. Uh, I stand for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Rainey? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I know there was some questions about handicap access for the building for the people from CASA. Uh, how is that being managed? There's an existing building code. What the code says in the state is that the building has to actually start uh, pursuing to go in compliance, but there's a gray area. It doesn't give you a time limit. It just says that actively. So you can start as the width of the door, 32 inches. You got the width of the door. I know in the restroom we put a handicapped toilet with an open seat and handrails. We're very limited when it comes to existing building, but the code recognizes that there's buildings that are not going to be 100% in compliance. You got to work with what you got to do without creating a, uh, work with what you have without creating a hardship. That's kind of where we're at. Right now, Somebody on a wheelchair can get in a doorway through the driveway. Uh, you had to put a handicap, maybe a, a, a decal showing that here's the parking. Mm -hmm. You got to give an accessible route. I think we do meet that, as I explained to Johnny one time. You just got to work towards it. You know, maybe on the next budget year, hey, this year I'm going to maybe put a sidewalk into the front because we want to go this route. But as of right now, we have put some measures, uh, some things in place so to accommodate. Be so that'll keep them, that, that won't stop them from being able to open? Oh, no. Okay. By, by all means, no. It's, it's like I said, the, it, there's some latitude there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? <clears throat> Mayor? Cicero. Um, I, I wanted to know, are we at a point where we're able to uh, look at the end and them actually being able to get in there? Is that where we're at? Yes. Uh, the air condition is <laughs> up and running, so we have air condition up and running. Uh, the plumbing's complete. We and David completed the, the plumbing last week. We were actually shoveling <laughs> and tying in some pipes. Uh, the plumbing's complete. The windows installed. We're, we do have to do some caulking, some minor issues uh, before the painter, uh, the contractor that's going to donate the painting. So we'll get the painting, maybe some the tape and float some painting. That'll be done. So uh, we're we're at the tail end of it. So do we have an actual date that will it, be turned over to CASA to finish uh, it? My hands are tied when you're asking for donations. I can tell you on my part, yes. we're probably 99%. Uh, when, I, when I solicit donations, when I, this contractor is aware, so when I tell him, it's going to be to his discretion, so to speak, because we're taking this as a donation at no cost. So I can't, I can't give you that. Day, but I know that they are working with me, and I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, it's within the next few weeks. So, is this with the flooring that you're waiting for oh, now, the, or the, this is for the painting? The painting, the table. You're waiting the for. Um, so, some contractors have been interested yes. in yes. donating, and so what we're waiting on now is um, the possibility that they are in fact going to do that and follow through. And so follow I'll, through. I, yes, and follow through. Yes, ma'am. Correct. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, and. Thank you for all your hard work. I know it's almost been 18 months, I think, since the last time we looked at it. Maybe not that long. Maybe a year. <laughs> it's not, though. I know there's been a lot of issues. I understand that, and I really appreciate the per perseverance to get this done and get it done so CASA doesn't have to have um, a major financial input. Well, I, I want you to stop by and take a look. It, it's just totally changed. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Rainey. Yeah. Item number eight is the city manager's message. Andres. Good Mayor and Council. I uh, wanted to give you a couple of updates this evening. The Kronos project, we began a, a simulated live performance for the first pay period this morning. We'll repeat that on the 21st. We had a manager's training um, with the consultant on a go-to meeting uh, earlier this week. I think most of the managers who will have oversight of reviewing the timesheets felt like it was so user friendly and so easy to use. We're still uh, going to have a train the trainers 
Uh, we will hope to have uh, two of our folks who deal with human resources to go to uh, Public Works and the Police Department in two Wednesdays to help the chief and help Mr. Weezor go through the timesheets electronically on a simulated basis. So we're moving towards that point of, of being live without paper, first paycheck in June. Tom Zoom's president and CEO about a week or so ago <laughs> cable around town pretty quickly. Uh, they were in looking at City Hall's connections. We've asked for a quote to go broadband uh, with our internet services at City Hall and the other buildings in the city. They also, as we facilitated several meetings with developers, they have met with the developers that are developing out on Airport Road, several developers on Highway 97. I think we may have some, um, uh, some promising results with del developers putting the infrastructure in on their private property uh, to connect to broadband cable. Uh, additionally, uh, our street reconstruction program, three of the first four roads that will be reconstructed, we open bids on Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Mr. Metting and Mr. Cope are uh, adding the bid tabs. Uh, we feel comfortable we'll have a recommendation to award the contract at the 26th meeting. Uh, you have several police department discussion action items in front of you this evening. I would ask that you um, listen to the chief. He and I have been working on this for about two and a half to three weeks. <coughs> uh, we have a very unusual opportunity where vehicles are concerned that we just do not feel like that uh, the city can afford to pass up. Uh, it's similar to last July when we came to you all about the remake of the Tahoe between the 2014-2015. As luck would have it, we have found a dealer in North Texas that ordered 150 2014s and then the agency didn't pick the order up after they hit the ground. And he's been trying to sell these 2014s for the last year, year and a half. We have a very unusual opportunity uh, to get, get some fleet replacement done this evening. Uh, I think the overall savings is about $53,000, which is what it cost to buy two of them. Our budget schedule will be produced to the new council when they're sworn in May 26th. We will follow much of the same regimen, the same timing as we did last year. We will ask the new council to um, cancel the first meeting in July, much like we've done over the last three years, to give staff and council some time off. Um, we've had some early numbers in from the appraisal district. It wouldn't be prudent to discuss them because they're very preliminary. Uh, but we think we're at least uh, static uh, with property values at this time. We'll see how uh, contests and lawsuits come through. but. Um, uh, we're moving towards that. I can tell you that we're working feverishly to get that draft budget ready for you all. Um, uh, I have to commend Raquel and I have to commend uh, Christy for working with me on that. Uh, They're doing a remarkable job. I'll stand for any questions or comments. Mr. Questions for Mr. Christian. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Thank you. Uh, item number nine is Mayor's message and announcements. We have two. Uh, we have a special session on the 11th of May at 2 p.m., Andreas? 2 p.m., so that's Monday at 2 p.m. And our meeting on the uh, our regular session on the 21st has been moved, just a reminder, to the 26th. That's all I have. Item 10 is proclamation for Friday, May 15th, to be Lupus Awareness Day in Pleasanton. Uh, my understanding is the group is not here to accept it, but I will stand to read it. Proclamation by the mayor of the city of Pleasanton, Texas. Whereas lupus is one of the cruelest and most mysterious diseases on earth, and whereas lupus is an unpredictable and misunderstood autoimmune disease that ravages parts of the body, and whereas lupus is difficult to diagnose, hard to live with, and a challenge to treat, and whereas the Lupus Foundation of America, Lone Star Chapter, is a national force devoted to solving <clears throat> the cruel mystery of lupus while providing caring support for those who suffer from, the brutal, from its brutal impact. Now, therefore, I, Clinton J. Powell, Mayor of the City of Pleasant, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 15, 2015 is a day of lupus awareness put on Purple Day, and encourage all to participate by wearing something purple, for example, wristbands, shirts, ties, etc., to raise awareness of lupus and rally public support to help public know lupus so we can have a world with no lupus. In witness thereof, I hereto set my hand and seal this seventh day of May 2015. Best just reminded me, election day, last day of the uh, for election, or election day is Saturday, so there's another reminder for you. 
All right, item number 11 is special recognitions of telecommunications officers for National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Week. Chief Sanchez. <clears throat> Good evening. This year, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week was held on April 12th through the 18th. Uh, we had some scheduling issues, so we weren't unable to recognize our telecommunications officers on that week. But we were able to <coughs> move it to today. And we, uh, I cannot say how much I appreciate the work that uh, our dispatchers do there. Uh, well, people are at home at night asleep. There's a dispatcher at the PD awake, dispatching officers. They're the lifeline to our police officers. Uh, they have a very crucial, stressful job. It could be boring one minute and heart stop and excitement the next. And uh, they play a vital role in the Pleasanton Police Department, and we appreciate them very much. And with your permission, Mayor, I'd like to call their names and have them step up here, and if we could have a picture taken with, Please. with you and the council, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize Amika Chapa. Samantha Garcia. Veronica Magaña. And Marissa Valdez. We have Andrew Pullen, but he's out sick today. I'd like to thank what these ladies do. I'm very grateful for what they do. Uh, I cannot stress how important their job is. And uh, the, the police department cannot function with these ladies. We also have our official photographer here, A. Osborne. <laughs> if we could get a, a picture, we would really appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. This is working pretty good, actually. <laughs> also, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a uh, heartfelt thank you from the communication staff for, to you and the council for approving the new Cardinal Badge software and our computer-aided dispatch. Uh, they're very grateful. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, item number 12 is introduction of new AEP and community affairs. Representative, I'm going to guess, should have been there. <clears throat> Mayor, I've been meeting with our new community relations manager for months now. Uh, asked her several months ago when we were, or a month or so ago, when we were beginning to discuss the Old Town Street Lamps down Main Street when it's reconstructed, trying to decide which way we wanted to go, whether we wanted to meter those lamps or whether we wanted to pay the regular street light fee each month. Uh, ask her if she would come to council uh, and say a few words and introduce herself. Your tablets uh, were provided by her this evening. I found her to be a, a can-do person. And the reason it's difficult to ask her to come is she lives in Uvalde. However, it's easy when she, we ask her to come to Pleasanton because she gets to visit with her father. And so without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Rita Paris this evening. I replaced Tony R.C. and I'm looking forward to working with everyone here. If you have any issues, call me. Inside this little book is my card. So feel free to call me anytime. I don't have the answers to everything, but I can pull in the parties and we can resolve whatever issue. So look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Item number 13, discussion action to appoint a hotel motel tax grant committee for two-year term. You all seated the very first hotel motel tax committee grant committee two years ago in March, you asked us to bring uh, it back for reappointment or new appointment, if you will, uh, before the review period started after the first initial two years. To recap, uh, we had looked for folks that were not associated with any of the groups that possibly apply for grants, someone who had folks who have knowledge of the tourism industry, someone who has a good understanding of finance and accounting and the accounting and those folks willing to be served. This evening we're asking for the reappointment of the spokesman for the committee for the last two years, Mr. Rusty Garvin. He could not be here tonight because of a prior commitment uh, with a civic organization that he is the president of. He's the president of Prosperity Bank. He's been involved in hotel motel grants and other communities and he brings a very unique perspective to the committee. We ask for the reappointment as well of Tiffany Bidwell. She's the owners of Kadobe's Restaurant in Pleasanton. She's been a long-time resident of this area in this region. She really understands what brings people from out of town to, quote, put heads in beds. We also ask for the reappointment of our museum director, Valerie Perguson. She is the first and foremost person who sees tourism as it enters our city, and they stop at the museum. She has done an excellent job over the last two years. The new appointments we're asking for this evening would be Carolina Martinez, our library, our director of the library. Although she has not been in Pleasanton that long, Carolina brings in a vast amount of experience from the cities of Austin and Arlington, which are huge tourism cities. She understands the keys to attracting people to the city. She's all about sharing our community with not only our citizens, but others as well. And we also ask for the appointment this evening of Earl Peterson. Mr. Peterson's been with the city of Pleasanton since 2007. He served in several capacities to include code enforcement, Supervisor of Community Development Services, and now as the Director of Facilities and Activities. His exposure to outside groups, and as much as anything, his 30 years in the hospitality business make him a perfect fit for this committee. I have asked those folks if they'd begin reviewing some of the documentation that's required. They have willingly began to review that documentation. Your options are in front of you this evening. I might remind you that you asked us to bring this back to you before the initial review process began after the initial two-year period. Our recommendation is to point the five individuals, three of whom would be reappointed, and two new ones to the Hotel Motel Tax Grant Committee to consider grant applications for fiscal years 16 and 17. Mayor? Chicago. I move to, uh, I move to approve the <coughs> appointment of the five individuals nominated to the Hotel Motel Grant Committee to consider grant applications for the physical year 2016-2017. Second. Moved and seconded to appoint the five individuals nominated to the Hotel Motel Grant Committee to consider grant applications for the fiscal year 2016-2017. Any discussion? Mayor. Central. Uh, Mr. Pearson, uh, I'm wondering, would Mr. Garvin immediately hold, continue to hold the chair? That would be selected by the committee itself. So they the would have a chance to yes, consider other 
yes, possibilities? Yes, ma'am. And, and they have asked me, several of the existing committee members have called me and asked me to come to a um, kind of a orientation meeting, if you will, before they start reviewing and considering new grants. Uh, I went two years ago to the first meeting, which was an orientation meeting. I gave them the letter of requirement that was approved by the council, the application, the post-event report form, and I said, if you need any help, call me, but I'm not a part of this committee. They appointed you because of your knowledge and your skill, and so I'll be at City Hall, and that's the last meeting I've been to. But they've asked me to come back uh, to go over the requirement letter, and uh, I would certainly go back before they start reviewing grants based on the request of the three existing members. And I just have one other thing. I, I would ask that um, uh, during that time you would specifically um, make sure that all of them understand a commitment as far as time is concerned and the number of questions that they may also need to answer in a timely way in order to provide the support necessary for the organizations who are are being considered. I will emphasize that. I appreciate that. Mayor, Mayor, I have a Mr. question. Mr. Gallegos. Uh, do, uh, do, does, the, do my, does my motion need to be amended to include the two-year term or not? Because I didn't include that in the motion. I think um, the recommendation was for fiscal year 16 and yeah, 17. Yeah, I think that okay. covers so it. So that covers it, okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Best. You know, I, I know that these are positions that have been uh, appointed by the city manager, but I wonder, because of their significance, if they wouldn't be better off appointed by city council. And as was described earlier, I'm a little hesitant making decisions that uh, will prevent the next city council from making decisions at this moment in time. I kind of would like to defer that to the next council. My only comment is if we defer to everything, we might as well just adjourn now. Well, I'm just talking about this one particular item. I'm not talking about everything. We brought it back at the request of the council from two years ago. <laughs> <clears throat> Another discussion? If not proceed to the vote, those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 14 is discussion action of Hotel Motel Tax Grant Committee. Mr. Garvin is not here. I would just reiterate what I said, Mayor, based on the comment and the question from Ms. Israel. They've asked me to come to an orientation meeting. Uh, we have put all the documentation together for the past grants this past year. Uh, they are reviewing the, the grants, uh, the post-event forms, and everything involved. Um, uh, they would plan on having a meeting in the next week or so, and uh, they'll be off and running and, and waiting for any applications that are submitted. Yes. Sure, Ms. Pacifica. Uh, Pacifica. I, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, when are those applications going to be available? When are they available? Mm -hmm. They're available right now. Um, when's the deadline? May 31st. May 31st. Um, the application period runs from, I believe, March 1st through May 31st. It's in the requirement letter each year. Yes, sir. But where do you get those applications? They can call City Hall or they can call Mr. Peterson at the library. I mean at the Civic Center, either one. They've always called City Hall when they want it. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Israel. Oh, I I, I had a uh, communication today that said that those applications are not available yet. Now, are we for sure that they are, in fact, available and they've been available since March 1st? Yes, ma'am. We are sure of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. To this point, we've received no calls, to my knowledge, asking for them that I know of. Okay. But they're freely available to anybody. Thank you. Other questions? I'd like to know if somebody at City Hall told somebody they're not available so we can correct that. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Thank you. Item number 16 is discussion action to purchase four handheld. Oh, wait. I skipped one. How about 15 first? 15 is a discussion action to purchase new police vehicles. Chief Sanchez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, our police fleet is aging rapidly. Uh, we feel 
while most agencies drive their vehicles for 60,000 miles, we drive ours till the wheels come off. And uh, we've got three that have in excess of 100,000 miles. Uh, they're still Crown Victorias. Uh, We've been seeing a trend that at about the 80,000 mile mark, we're just pouring money into these vehicles and in major repairs. Uh, we've come across an opportunity to purchase some 2014 Chevrolet Tahoes. They're brand new. They've been sitting on the lot. They have the warranty. Um, they've got the warranty. They're blue, the same color that we use and uh, we think this is a pretty rare opportunity uh, to purchase them. Uh, we'd save a significant amount if we buy 2014s instead of 15s or 16s. I think it would be uh, fiscally responsible. It would show that we're fiscally responsible. We don't need to, if, it's a brand new vehicle. It's just got two years on it. Uh, I noticed on the recommendation, uh, there was a typo, it says, which I will bring to your attention later, uh, at that, at a price of $223,690.05, we would be able to buy six Chevrolet Tahoes. That would be fully equipped, ready to hit the streets. And could you say the, the uh, price again, the total price? For all six is two hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred and ninety dollars and five cents. That includes five patrol vehicles and uh, one for me to drive because my vehicle has one hundred and twenty eight thousand miles right now and it's in the shop and we're looking at about two thousand dollars to repair. Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> my Chevy Trailblazer. Mayor, I might add, he wouldn't buy that vehicle. I told him he was going to buy that vehicle. That <laughs> after 130,000 miles, it's time for him to have a vehicle. And uh, no, I think this is a great opportunity for us. It's a rare opportunity uh, to purchase. Uh, I know it's a big bite to take, but I don't know if we would ever have an opportunity like this again to purchase a metal uh, to where we could save $53,000 which essentially is the price of two of them, the base price. Of Mayor? Fully equipped, that's $37,281.66. More or less. Right. Mayor? Ms. Israel. Yes, I'd like to make a motion. Please. I'd like to make a motion to direct the city staff to purchase six uh, 2014 Chevrolet Tahoes from Reliable Chevrolet and all the equipment necessary to make them ready for patrol service and uh, other parentheses cheese vehicle for a total price of $223,690.05. Second. And uh, submit a budget amendment if necessary before the end of the fiscal year 2015 to account for the purchase. Second. Second. <laughs> the moved and seconded to direct the city staff to purchase six 2014 Chevrolet Tahoes. Second. From reliable Chevrolet and all the equipment necessary to make them ready for patrol and other, in parentheses, Chiefs vehicle, for a total price of $223,690.05 and submit a budget amendment if necessary before the end of the fiscal year 2015 to account for the purchase. Any discussion? Uh, Chief, uh, this vehicle will mostly like have the same guarantee on just like five year, 100,000 miles. We looked at the smaller Ford Explorer but they have a 60,000 mile warranty oh, oh. and I think if we're going to drive them till they're not usable anymore I think the 100,000 mile warranty would be a huge advantage for us so they're they come with the extent of the warranty so I feel like we're getting a good deal and I mean they're new cars so yes sir they've been sitting on the lot we, we ought to pop the whip at it <laughs> 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 No, proceed to the voters in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Uh, item number 16 is discussion and action to purchase, purchase four handheld cardinal badge ticket riders and asset forfeiture with asset forfeiture funds. Again, uh, the asset forfeiture fund, there's a, a section in the law that says it could be spent 
at the discretion of the chief. Uh, however, we feel you all should be part of the decision-making process. This is money that we seized from drug dealers. It's not taxpayers' money. We love taking drug dealer <laughs> money, uh, especially when we use it to buy equipment that's going to be used against them. You don't have another $223,605 cents? <laughs> We'd buy 12 Tahoes if we did. But we can buy four ticket riders uh, with warranty. Uh, we can buy all four for $5,200. They've offered us a special rate through Cardinal uh, where we purchased the recent software. Uh, this will cut our traffic officers. It'll cut their citation writing and uh, their time that it takes to write a citation. It'll cut it in half. Okay. Mayor, Mayor. And more efficient. Ms. Israel. Yes, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion Please. to purchase four handheld Cardinal badge ticker rod, ticket riders with uh, asset for, forfeiture funds in the amount of $5,200. Second. It has been moved and seconded to purchase four handheld Cardinal badge ticket riders with asset forfeiture funds in the amount of $5,200. Or $5, Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Mayor, thank you, Council. Chief left. Item number 17 is discussion action for the designation of demolition of a structure at 504 Water Street, property ID 29079. Good evening, Mayor Council, once again. Uh, I'm here to bring up. Uh, with some dilapidated houses that we are currently seeking to uh, the notice that uh, we're seeking to uh, do the property demo if not compliance. Well, the first one is at 504 North Waters, uh, property ID 29079, owned by Isabel T. Lopez and JT. And I, I think since we have everything, yes, Council, we, do you have any uh, questions as per what was in the packet for this item? If not, instead of having Mr. Rainey go through everything that was in our package. They're, they're all typical. And as you can see through the pictures, uh, if you just want to kind of skim through them real quick, like, so that, is that, a, that address right there? That's Water Street. Uh, go to the next one. Well, let's not go past Water Street because they're broken Water up. Water Street, right there, excuse me. We're on Water Street right now, so okay. uh, we recommend that the City Council designated property listed above as dilapidated hazards and after proper notification in time, the owner does not bring the structure and property up to current building code standards, ordinance, or demolish and clear the lot. The City Council will authorize the city personnel to demolish the structure and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure and clear the lot. And we will give the proper notice through the paper and do everything that's required through us by ordinance uh, before we proceed. Okay. Mayor? Uh, yes. I make a recommendation to designate. Uh, wait, not Can I get you to not use recommendation? <laughs> oh, a recommendation. Yeah, you could. How about a motion? There you right. go. Okay. I like I'm that sorry really about that. Use the motion yeah. Either. I make a motion uh, to designate the property listed. Um, hmm. None of the rest of that. It just has above. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and insert the um, property or uh, structure at 504 Water Street, property ID 29079, uh, as dilapidated and hazardous and after proper notification in time, the owner does not bring the structure and property up to current building code standards, ordinances, or demolished and cleared the lot, the city council will authorize city personnel to demolish the structure and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure or structures and clear the lot. It's been moved and seconded to designate the property at 504 Water Street, property ID 29079 as dilapidated and hazardous and after proper notification in time, the owner does not bring the structure, structures, and property up to current building code standards, ordinances, or demolished and clear the lot. The city council will authorize city personnel to demolish the structure and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure, structures, and clear the lot. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? 
Mr. Best. I do want to say that I appreciate you making each one of these properties a separate line item and giving them their due diligence. I appreciate that. As you requested. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I understand now. It makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Other discussion? If none, we'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Oh, I'm sorry. I was warned. I was busy. <laughs> motion carries. Item number 18 is discussion and action to designate demolish uh, demolition of the structure at 555 College Street, property ID 28. 485 again everything's in the packet do we have any questions for uh, mr rainy and i guess you'll put the pictures up as we or, uh, or right Ford. here this one has several more pictures this one we might have to uh, consider this an emergency uh, the reason being there is a lot of stagnant water uh, it is uh, with the mosquitoes it's it's breeding mosquitoes there's several tires uh, drainage ditch uh, what have you uh, I mean, it's, it's just uh, overwhelming. Uh, I don't know if y'all been by there, take a look at but it's overwhelming. I need to read the order and see what we can do. And this one, I might have to uh, give a shorter notice and uh, consider it as an emergency to get out there and address this uh, at AP. Okay. Mayor. Mr. Cagos. I move to direct city staff to declare the uh, designation of the demolishment demolishing of a structure at 555 College Street property ID 28485 designated the property listed above as dilapidated and hazarded, hazardous <coughs> and after proper notification and time that the owner does not bring the structures structure structures and the property up to current building code standards ordinances or de demolish and clear the lot, the city council will authorize the city personnel to demolish the structures and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure and clear the lot and declare it an emergency. Second. Man, you're making that difficult on me. All right. It's been moved and seconded to designate for demolition a structure at 555 College Street, property ID 28485, dilapidated and hazardous, and after proper notification in time, the owner does not bring the structure, structures and property up to current building code, standards, ordinances, or demolished and cleared the lot. The City Council will authorize city personnel to demolish the structure, structures and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure, structures, and clear the lot and declare an emergency. <coughs> Any discussion? You did good. If there's none, we'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Item number 19 is discussion action for the designation of demolition of a structure at 123 North Street, property ID 28526. Again, everything's in the packet. I do want to mention that I forgot to mention all these houses, to ensure these houses are all vacant and are all over 50% to get them into compliance. So, with that being said, uh, 123 North, Edmonton. This is the third structure on the property. It is actually one large parcel. Uh, there's a main structure that they're still living on, but this house, as you can see, it's well over 50% dilapidated. Uh, it was to get up to current standards and start to finish up. Uh, we just specified that this is the, on the property, that this is the last structure, the rear wall structure, not to confuse the owner and not to get the ordinance. Uh, sure with the wrong house that we're slapping, I mean, tearing down all three because they still are occupying the, the main structure. Okay. That being said. Mayor. Goes. I move to direct city staff to designate an, of the demolishment of the structure at 123 North Street, property ID number 28526, the property listed above as dilapidated and hazardous and after proper notification and time that the owner does not bring the structure or structures and property up to current building code standards ordinances or demolish and clear the lot the city council <laughs> will authorize city personnel to demolish the structure structures and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost for the city to demolish the structure and clear the lot and that property be the last property to the North. That's, that's already in there. Right. We're secondary. Yeah. Yeah, that's already in there. Second. 
right, it's been moved and seconded to for the de designation of demolition of a structure at 123 North Street, property ID 28526. Uh, as dilapidated and hazardous and after proper notification and time, the owner does not bring the structure, structures, and property up to current building code standards, ordinances, or demolish and clear the lot. City Council will authorize city personnel to demolish the structure, structures, and clear the lot and place a lien on the property to recover the amount of cost to the city to demolish the structure, structures, and clear the lot. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Best. Uh, we, we keep going through the same language. Is this part of a, con uh, a condemnation policy or... Do we have that kind of written somewhere so we could just refer to that policy instead of having to repeat it each time? Uh, it is because since we did line item for each one, it's actually a separate agenda item. If, if you actually just read the agenda item, that's sufficient. Okay. Any other discussion? None proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 19 is discussion action for designation of demolition of a structure at 26 Sunrise, property ID 26965. Again, it's all in there. Mayor. Ms. Israel. Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, for the designation of a demolition of a structure at 26 Sunrise Drive, property ID 26965. Tw <coughs> it's 126. No, it's just 26. 26965. Second. It's been moved and seconded to for the designation of demolition of a structure at 26 Sunrise Drive property ID 26965. Any discussion? None will proceed to the votes in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 21 is discussion action for the demolition, designation of demolition of a structure at 507 Fifth Street property ID 28396. Mayor. Ms. Israel. I'd like to make a motion for the designation of the demolition of a structure at 507 Fifth Street property ID 28396. <coughs> Second. Seconded for the designation of demolition of a structure at 507 Fifth Street, property ID 28396. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion but carries. I've been voting. Have you gotten me counting for voting? Have I been voting? Because I just, for, okay. <laughs> Voting. That's a bad question That's what, to 20, ask in a court. That's what 23 years will do to you. <laughs> we'll have to review the tape later. Well, I don't remember. Item number 22 is discussion and action for the designation of demolition of a structure at 423 Austin Street, property ID 29609. Mayor. Ms. Israel. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion for the designation of demolition of a structure at 423 Austin Street, property ID Second. 29609. Second. It's been moved and seconded. For the designation of demolition of a structure at 423 Austin Street, property ID 29609. Any discussion? Can I ask a question? Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. I'd like to make a statement. I, these people that own, or supposedly, this lady that claims she owns that property, she's been paying taxes for 30 years, 35 years, but by law or documentation, she does not have any proof of owning it. I said, well, okay, let me find out something else. I said, uh, by finding out something, I, I, I told her that I was going to get into it some more because <coughs> I went to the store yesterday, the dollar store, and there was a gentleman spraying some insecticide or something or wheat peel or something. But now I haven't heard from her, and she hasn't approached me to ask me any more questions. So, I mean, here it is on the agenda, so bad luck for her, I guess. Okay. That's what I told her. If you don't comply with the court, she said, well, I, I got a letter, certified letter that, clean, uh, you know, uh, cut the grass or weed. <coughs> I saw somebody <coughs> doing that yesterday, but the house, I told her, if you don't comply with whatever you've been told or asked to do, the house going to be demolished. Understood. Yes, sir. So I just thought I'd bring that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? Thank you. None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Flores, Mr. Reno. Also, I want to thank you. Uh, also, I want to point out, Jesse, he goes out there every day, and it's a hard job. He stays with it. So I just want to thank him, part of my staff, and recognize him for hard work. Twenty-seven. The regular session of May seventh, two thousand fifteen, is hereby recessed to hold an executive session pursuant of Chapter five fifty-one of the Texas Government Code. So chapter D, as it pertains to attorney 
551.071 executive session matters may be discussed in open session if appropriate. Mayor. Time is 7.59 p.m. Mayor, for the record, I would, recu I would like to recuse myself from executive session agenda item A. So noted. The regular session of May 17, 2015 is now reconvened at 7, or excuse me, 9.18 p.m. Item number 26, discussion of possible action regarding the possible resolution to cause number 14-09-0794-CVA style for the City of Pleasant versus Ernest Trevino, 218 District Court, Nevada, Coast County, Texas. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Garza. Uh, I move that we... Uh direct the city manager and the city attorney to meet with Mr. Uh, Trevino's attorney and uh, proceed in what we discussed in executive session. Second. Moved and seconded to direct the city manager and the city attorney to repeat that address. Let's meet with Mr. Trevino's attorney. Can we just change that to communicate, please? To communicate. Okay. You maintain your second? Uh, yes. Uh, to communicate with Mr. Trevino's attorney as discussed in executive session. Any discussion? There's none. Proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion Mayor, carried. I abstain. So noted. Item number 27, review of the bills. Mr. Gagos? Uh, no, sir. Ms. Pacifica? No, sir. Mr. Garza? No, sir. Mr. Best? No, sir. Mr. Sines? No, sir. Ms. Israel? No. <laughs> Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. Move second, we adjourn. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Meeting is adjourned at 9 19 p.m.